Hello everyone, welcome to my new video. In this one we are going to assemble GTEC 8020M. We will take it out of the box and assemble to bring it to this form and step by step you will see how to assemble this 3D printer. Stay tuned and we will start right into assembling this printer. Before that don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the thumbs up button if you like this video. And comment down below if you are confused and if you need any help. And see you guys in the next video. But let's start this one. Right now I have all the parts on the table including this user manual. Let's start assembling. And right in this ziplock I have all the tools I need for this assembly. Let's start with taking our tools out and going over the assembly steps one by one. At this point, when you take the printer on, before I move on to the every next step, you can realize that this one is shaking. So first, let us start by fastening the, fastening the rollers under this bed so that it's gonna be easy for us to complete the next steps. What I did right now, I put the printer to the side and bring the bed all the way front and I can see the roller portions over there. Let's zoom in and I'm going to use my a wrench to simply fasten these. Let's zoom in more. And here is my wrench. I'm just gonna put it and turn them so that they are fastened and it's not. I'm just gonna turn them like this. And as you can see, when we shake this, basically it's not moving anywhere. So. This one is stabilized. For me, the next step is to arrange the power setting. So it's right now at 230 volt, and I'm going to turn it to 115 because I'm in USA, and I need this to be 115, otherwise it will destroy the machine. So if you're in Europe, go for 230. If you're in US, go for 115. And anywhere around the world, just make sure that you are correct using the correct voltage settings. Next, what I'm going to do is to remove this cover. And then now I'm going to remove the cover of my heated bed sheet and then connect them together. I'm just aligning it from the corners. And I sticked it. Which is good. Um, it says recommended first layer height is 0 0.3 millimeter here. This is first time I see a recommendation of the first layer height on written on a heated bed. First time. I have lots of printers and none of them says this. It's interesting. We will see. Now I'm going to open another bag where I have many other pieces. These are metric five uh, screws that we are going to put over here the four holes four of them to connect the gantry with the base and these are i think the yeah i think these are filament detection sensors and we have a micro sd and i think the step doesn't matter at this point but i'm going to since i have the micro sd with me i'm just going to plug in the micro sd just because i don't want to lose it and here is the micro SD card slot and it's the other way around so I'm just going to connect it done next up I'm going to get my the gantry and I'm going to put it here like this and connect it all together as you can see this is also shaking too we are going to arrange the rollers under it as well uh, after we connect them together so for this step I'm going to Lay the printer to the other side, make it seenable for you guys. And I'm, I'm bringing the gantry from the side, and these fasteners will go from here. And you will just like turn it with your hand to stabilize it together, and get the second one, and then do the same too. I do realize it's a little bit hard by hand, so just use an L wrench. I do find these Allen wrenches a little bit small for this machine. It could make my life better if it were to be longer Allen wrenches for this job because you can see it's hard to reach it. Next is the other side. 
but before I go next let me try to show you how does it look from the inside as you can see there are two holes in there and I put the screws into those holes now I reoriented the printer and I'm going to do the exact same thing for the opposite side okay this one's complete too also one thing to note here when you're moving printer around is leaving a residue behind so on your white table be careful i will try to remove this with ipa but but the legs of the printer the rubber legs are leaving residue if you just like move it around without lifting it just to be careful next we are going to get our extruder motor the first one and we are going to attach it to the top section of our printer before we do that what we need to do is to put these um, small screws with the t-nut connection Get these small screws that connect them with the T-nut connection. And we are going to make them ready by just inserting them like this, but not all the way, a little bit leave it. These are the nuts and screws that comes with this assembly. So you will find them nearby the assembly. We did this for the first motor and I'm going to do the same thing for the second motor too. Okay, this is the second motor, inserting the screw to the hole and putting a T-nut and I'm going to do the same too inserting the screw and putting a T-nut let's put these motors onto the bar so this is the top bar we have and we are going to assemble these like this right in here. So just align these T-nuts with the bar opening, align them and then put the Allen wrench and fasten them. The location of these definitely depends on you. Put this one here and put it here like a two finger gap so that when the Z-axis is all the way up, it's not going to hit the section. So put two fingers here, fasten their first motor, first screw, and then the other screw right next to it. Okay, this one is done, fastened. Now I'm going to do for the second one, same thing. Again, I'm going to put two fingers here to align it. And then fasten the screw. and the other screw as well now we have two of the extruder motors are connected safely and skewed okay from the same package that we have the nozzles and four um, screws with the t-nuts get those screws with the t-nuts and we are going to use these to stabilize the filament holders right in here so this is the first filament holder we are going to put it, but I was just confused by the three uh, screw notation here. And I don't know why they put the third one, but we are going to only use these two and place it like this. So the third one was a confusion for me. Maybe there's a uh, use for it in the future assembly steps, but so far I didn't see that. Let's assemble this one. I'm just uh, removing the T-nut from the screw here and I am going to put first screw to the first hole and then I'm going to put this Tina here I'm going to do the same for the second one just remove the nut and the T-nut and put it in I just did that too Come on, this is not rocket science, I can do this. Okay, after that, so the orientation is going to be this way, towards the back of the printer. I'm going to bring it close to the extruder and I'm gonna put like one finger uh, offset and then I'm going to get my appropriate Allen wrench. There's only one long Allen wrench and then fasten it. 
and you fasten the other one too. So let's close look to here to just give you a better look. As you can see, the two screws are fastened with the T-nuts to this bar and one section over here is empty. So this is going to be empty. So I'm going to do the same thing over here for the second one. Let's do that. Okay, I got my two screws and put them the T-nuts under. Now I'm going to put this one again, same thing. I'm just gonna give one finger offset and then fasten it. Okay, the fastening of the holders are done too. And let's take a close look to the in between. And as you can see, these are the orientations and this is the front of the printer. You can see the LCD screen over there and this is the back of the printer. So we are continuing with the completing the filament holder connections. We have this another zip bag where there are two rings to connect this filament holder bars. And here the bars are. These are basically having a lock system on them. So after we put it in like this, it locks. So let's do that. So we put this one in here and engage the lock, turn it, done. Same thing to the other side. Turn it and done. So the filament holders are complete and their bars are complete. Filament holder bars are complete. The holder portion metal are complete too. And let's move to the next step. Next, we have this uh, cable holder unit and there are two screws in here. We are going to loosen the screws, not all the way out. Just loosen them until this piece can get in. Two of them. Okay, and then slide this piece in there, see, and then fasten them. This one's complete, and we are going to stabilize this in a moment. So what I'm going to do is basically we have these filament detector sensors that we need to put in, okay? And these sensors are going to get fastened to here as far as I understand. However, we don't have the nuts under this. But I think if this, that this is not told in the this is not told in the user manual, assembly manual, so I think I can fit them in here like this by removing these screws. I might not need to use those two nuts. However, it would be better to tell us that so that I don't have to figure out this by myself. And only the people who will watch this video will know about that now. Okay, since there are screw threads in these metal pieces, I'm just gonna put the filament holder here and put this one here like this and then fasten it back. And yes, it holds, great. This is the solution. We don't need those nuts. Uh, thank God you guys have me. Otherwise, this user manual doesn't say that. I hope you guys are Googling how to assemble GTEC 820M and you see this video and you guys complete this assembly correctly. And in here, the second unit and second filament holder will get in there. So I'm removing these two screws from their locations. I'm curious if there is any example print inside the RSD card. That should be, and that should be multi-material print too. I am really hoping there is one. It took some time, I'm going to fast forward with this. And we get this filament holder sensor, and we get this filament detection sensor. I put those screws, and I am fastening them back here. I like printers with filament detection sensors, and this printer is supposed and this printer turns out to have two filament detection sensors. I think it's cool. Now I turn the printer towards me and we have two PTFE tubing coming out from the extruder. I'm just going to connect left to the left, right to the right. And this is my right. I remove the clipper here and put the tubing all the way in. And I'm putting the clipper back on. Same thing for the left hand side. Put it all the way in 
put the clipper back on. Now back to here, my um, wind blow, my cooler fan blower was detached, so I'm just going to put it back in here. Maybe it's broken. Oh, it is broken. See, this portion basically broke off from this uh, section over here, and I need to put it back somehow. Okay, let's put it in. I think it's gonna hold, but I can super glue this. And I wanted to remove this screw from here, but we have a screw here that is smaller than any other size. And I can see that somehow somebody um, somebody used a hot glue in here. I think this could be more um, professional at this point. But I'm just going to use a super glue to glue this together. Okay, I got my super glue. I'm going to squeeze a tiny bit of glue here. And this is a 3D printed part, so we can reprint it anyways, but we just need to design. And if I can find the design, I'm going to put the link down in the description of this video. If you guys put, if you guys find it, just comment down please so that we can help each other. And now I um, super glued this. This problem is solved very quickly. Okay, now we are looking from the side of the printer. If you have your Z-axis tool off, just um, turn your coupling from the back, as you can see over there, and lift it up because we are going to put the wrench under it. And I'm trying to show that to you guys. Okay, as you can might see, this extruder basically shakes, right? And we are going to fasten this portion over here to stabilize the extruder. It is the roller at the bottom. Okay, and turn it and fasten it. And you can see that this roller I'm talking about. And now it doesn't shake anymore. It's good, it's old. Okay, now if you look at it, we are complete with all the hardware related assembly. And what we left is basically we have extra nozzles, two nozzles here and some screws uh, that are like backup screw kit. And these two are the only things that are left and we have some zip ties that we are going to use. And let's move on to the cable connections. And the other extra part that we have is this um, PTFE tubings. So we have extra PTFE tubings as well. Okay, in here we have a bunch of cables. I just uh, unzipped them, they were like zip tied. So relax these cables and we will start connecting our cable connections. Right here, the shortest, uh, it is also marked with Z motor, ZM. Just connect into the Z motor. And this is the Z, E, S, E stop, I guess. Why they call it extra stuff? I don't know. We are going to connect this one here to the, um, to the Z axis limit switch. Pull it a little bit towards you and under it, move it and fit it in to show you this sign and i just fit it in like this okay over here y axis motor and the limit switch are already connected so we are not going to deal with them and since we are here just plug in the power cord but don't plug it into the wall yet and just plug this one in okay now here what we are going to do is to connect our extruder cable this is the extra cable, the bulky one. There's only one way you can connect it, and it is this way. Okay. We just push it in, and we now connected it. And they do suggest this must be stabilized. I don't understand that. Let's stabilize it so that it doesn't move or come out which would be really bad. Okay, I just like put this one in here and put the zip tie and I'm just like fastening it. Stabilize so that when the extruder is moving, this is not going to come out. Next, we have these filament detection sensors and the motors and there are only two cables left. So over here with this cable, we have extruder motor zero and filament detection zero and extruder motor one, filament detection one. I am going to connect this to the right hand side one at this position and I'm going to connect it from the bottom. Connected. 
and same goes for the extrusion motor one here this is zero this is one okay got it so these are connected we are going to arrange the cables later on and we have another cable right here that we are going to connect which is for motor x and x limit switch okay this is always the trickiest one you see the socket here we will reach to this socket it's going to be hard with the finger with big fingers so you might want to help from the smaller finger people and let's put it in and then push it and done the motor connection is right in here boom this one to connect it over here now i'm going to cut the excessive extra zip tie that i put so that one's cut so i want to do something about this cable which comes to the extruder motors on top and i think i'm just gonna get a zip tie from here and just make them hold a little bit tenser but that's it i'm going to cut this zip tie so this cable is done for the extruder cable i'm just going to zip tie another portion to here and give it a good loose point in here so that whenever this one goes up it's not going to block anything This will avoid this cable to touch to any printed object over here. Now I'm going to cut these. One other thing before we move into the operation of the printer, before we power it up actually, I'm just going to put the filament in here uh, that came with the printer and I'm going to put it in. Press this and push it all the way in and I have the other filament here I'm just gonna do the same I hooked it into the filament holder put the filament in from the tubing why it's so hard to push it okay now I'm going to press this lever and push it all the way into the extruder Okay, now we have whole printer here. I'm just plugged it into the wall and just like push the button. Let's look at it. I think this is a reset button. Press it, nothing happened. Okay. Okay, it reset it. It's morning 1.1.8. Okay, clicked it, go to the info screen, there's baby C step. Prepare, move axes. Okay, auto home disable savers, create PLA, ABS. Let's go to the control. Simple control. There's mixer. Mix. Toggle mix. Gradient. Interesting, interesting. Okay. Go back to the mixer. So basically, we can merge two colors in this one. Print. Evap printer. Get back. Evap printer. Printer board. This is the software. Printer in, uh, printer info. The board GT2560 version 4.1. Okay, thermistors 100k. Min temp 5, max temp 125. Oh, this is the bed probably. Okay. Let's get back. Okay. Let's click prepare and click auto home. Let's, I'm going to zoom on and I'm going to let you guys watch the auto home. Okay, when we do that, it's fast. That was pretty fast. Okay, let's go down. We will need to level the printer. And everything stopped on the point. So basically, cable connections are good. Leveling works. What we need to check is the temperatures of the bed and the extruder at this point. Okay, when we come to the print from the SD, 
there is only one cat I'm just curious this is 3.5 hours we will take a look at that and print that let's go back to main and let's go back to the info screen we are going to test the temperatures let's click prepare and let's click preheat PLA let's do the bolt at the same time and it's going heating up to the 60 and the other one is heating up to 190 we are going to see both of them and while that is going on i'm just gonna move the z-axis a little bit up okay I'm going to assume the extruders are working, but you can test your extruders by just like moving them. And but they said hot and too cold, so yeah. And then after we test the temperatures, we are going to simply level the corners, and then we will be ready to print. We have a leveling paper came with it. Um, it shows how to level it. And tells you how to adjust things. It puts a here um, auto leveling, auto leveling. Um, it puts a here auto leveling connection point. I see auto leveling connection point on my printer, but there is no auto leveling. So simply, uh, we are going to do the manual leveling, and we are going to test it. Yeah. And I think I think this paper. I think I think this paper is too thick for leveling paper. Just to let you guys know right now i'm just going to disable the stepper so that i can move them by hand and when i get back here i see that the bed is 6 c i'm just gonna move it move it towards me and i can feel that this is hot it works great and it, it really heat up very fast and it might be because it's directly connected to 120 or it might be just 24 volts too but it does work and now let's check the extruder temperature of course i'm not going to touch it directly but let's see oh okay of course i'm not going to touch it directly but i can see that it heated up because there's a filament color of green came out of it so it is hot which is good so both of them are working okay guys right now what we did is we opened the printer up we checked the heated bed we checked the extruder those are both heating we checked the xyz axis and their limits which is those are both moving i disabled the staples move them by hand everything looks fine and we are assuming that the extruder motors are working we will see that while they are printing i think that's all right and now what we are going to do as the next step is to level the printer Okay, before we start leveling, we will just go down to the menu and click prepare. From there, we will click auto home. So when we click auto home, the printer will home itself and we will see level corners. Let's click level corners and it will move the printer's head to the first corner that we want to level. For leveling, you will need a piece of paper. I'm going to use a post-it, which is a thin enough for me. And I'm just going to put it in between the nozzle and the bed. I will basically slide this paper under it, left and right, and while doing that, I'm going to raise the bed up until I feel a little bit friction. So I will show a close look up to this as well, just bear with me, because we are going to repeat this progress three times. And in here again. Click to the next corner. Then again. Okay. So after you level four corners, click back on the menu and click prepare again and then click auto home again. 
and then make your and then make your printer go to the auto home and then level corners again and repeat this progress three times level it auto home level it auto home level it auto home and you will have a fine-tuned bed leveling Thank you so much for watching this video. At this moment, you completed the entire assembly of GTEC 820M. Step by step, I hope you guys made it through all the video. Right now, you must have started the print from its SD card and the printer is printing at the moment. It's gonna take around three hours and we will see the results. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to use Jura settings, slicing settings for this 3D printer. And finally, we will end up with a review video for this specific printer. Stay tuned guys and see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe.